Well, the old cub's been uh, starting to smoke on me lately. Probably started about two months ago, you know, with some light blue smoke coming out of the exhaust. Now it's gotten to the point where it's, it's quite excessive. Surprisingly, it still runs great, but man, she is really smoking. So let me tell you what I did so far. Uh, the first thing I did was just the easiest thing in the world. I just played around with the air fuel mix on the carburetor. Thought maybe it was running, you know, way too rich, but that was not it. The next thing I did was I just put some additive in the fuel to see if that might clean up the, uh, the intake system. That did not change anything. So today I gave it an oil change. Put some fresh oil in there. I probably got it up to operating temperature three different times today, let it get really hot, drove it around. And no change to the smoke after that. So the next thing I did was I pulled all the spark plugs. They were very oily, as you know you might expect. So I got those all cleaned up, and when they were out, I uh, did a compression test. I only got about 60 on number four. Only got about 60 or 65 on number three. And then number two and number one there, I have not yet checked. I think the uh, service manual says the compression should be around 125. So 60 is not satisfactory. So anyway, at this point, I'm guessing the piston rings are the issue because I've got terrible compression and I've got tons of blow by. I suppose this could also be a valve issue of some kind. So before I remove the hood and really start digging in and taking the head off and everything else, I'm just gonna pop the valve cover off here and uh, we'll have a visual inspection of the springs and the valve clearances. I don't know if we'll find anything in there that's causing this problem, but that will be the easiest place to start. So now I want to make a list of all the things that uh, this possibly could be. So we'll start with valve adjustment. And then quite possibly the valve's not sealing. And then of course the big one could be rings. Maybe a head gasket. And I hate to even mention this, but it could be cracking the block. Or cracking the head. Or maybe something unknown that I'm not thinking of. I really don't think it's going to be any of this bad stuff down here. I think more likely it's something up here, and of course all of this can be fixed. Well, 20 minutes later, I got these inside nuts off. You can only get like, you know, 20% of a turn each time with a wrench. So that took a while. So now this whole manifold and carburetor should just come off and down. All right, let's have a look at these valves. Let go, 
There we go. The manual says to set the clearance of the intake and exhaust valves to 13 thousandths when cold. Number one's actually pretty good. Anyway, let's move on to number three. That's the next one in line to fire. Well, three is actually good too. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. I'll bring you back in just a minute. Well, just as I suspected, the other two remaining cylinders were in proper adjustment as well. So now I'm just gonna spin the motor over with the hand crank and we're just gonna watch the valves go up and down, see if there's anything obvious going on. Well, everything looks usual and customary in the bottom of the valve train there. And they're all adjusted properly. Everything looks like it's functioning normally. So we can cross that off the list. But I'm gonna leave the uh, manifold and carburetor off because it looks like the next thing we're gonna to have to do is take the hood off and remove the head and take a look at the uh, rings and the cylinders. One, two, three, four. Got those labeled just to make things easier for myself when I put it back together. Okay, let's see what we've got. All right, so here we are. We got a bunch of oil residue, which of course we were expecting with all that blow by. Um, those valves are just caked with it. This coolant, I don't think was actually inside there. Uh, I think I just spilled some down there from the water jacket from the head when I was taking it off. All right, what do we got? Well, we got a bunch of oil. The spark plugs themselves are kind of shiny on the bottom, but that's because I cleaned them when I, I took them out to do the compression test. I, uh, I wire brushed the spark plugs, but they were all just covered in this um, black oily stuff, just like the rest of the combustion chamber is. The gasket actually looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't see anything obviously, you know, flawed or broken or wrong with it. Very thick. Here's a close up of uh, one of the valves there. Uh, yeah, there's 
I mean, I don't know if this was the original issue or a secondary issue, but there's no way that thing's seating now. You know, that one maybe. Well, we've definitely learned that the valve sealing issue is probably part of the problem. The head gasket that came off the tractor looked just fine to me. There were no blowouts, no damage. So we're going to cross that off the list. All right, let's take a closer look at the cylinder walls now. Well, they are actually a little bit glossy. I don't see any honing marks on these whatsoever. Let's check the other two. Same thing with these. Well, I cleaned up the top of the block a little bit. We're just gonna put a straight edge to it just to make sure there's no obvious warps to this thing, which I doubt. More likely the head would be warped than this part. But as long as we're doing this, we're gonna be thorough. All right, so that's all perfectly flat. Let's check the uh, head. Well, the head seems pretty good also. Seems to be uh, nice and flat. Except for the ones on the end that look like they were replaced. All the rest of the valves have the International Harvester logo on them still. Along with part numbers. These are either the original valves to this engine or they're just very old. These are the more modern style. At the very least, this thing uh, needs a valve job, but the smarter thing to do is probably just to get all new valves, valve guides, and valve springs. So we still don't know about the rings, but the cylinders do need to be honed. So I guess the correct thing to do would be to uh, remove all the pistons, see if they're still original size or if they're larger. I don't see any stamping marks on the top. You know, it's a lot of times if they're if they're over, there'll be a indication on the top, but. All right, I've got all the oil pan bolts removed and should just drop right down. Let's take a look under there. All right, I've got the rod cap off of uh, number one. So now I'm gonna push the uh, piston up and out from underneath. You can see right there that the rods are marked that's number one for the number one cylinder with a little arrow on the other side. There's nothing same way with the rod cap. This side has number one with an arrow matches up with this one. Other side is blank. So they are directional uh, as far as which way they go inside the engine like that. The piston itself looks okay. Now I want to measure the diameter of the piston just to see if it's a uh, factory spec or if it's uh, larger. Make sure your caliper is zeroed out. It is 2.625. These insert bearings look generally okay, but you can see there's a scratch there in the middle of that one. 
and it's large enough I can actually get my fingernail on it. So that's probably not ideal. Um, this bottom one, you can see that right there, it's got some crosshatch scratches. And it's also got that same vertical scratch in the center. I did not see that scratch on the journal of the crankshaft, so that's good. So my normal uh, valve spring compressor that I have for flatheads was way too big for the cub. It wouldn't fit. So I didn't have any modern alternatives, but I did have a couple antique uh, valve spring compressors hanging on my wall. And it was funny because both of those worked very well. Here's one of them. This is a pretty unique piece. So make sure it's extended all the way out. And then you put it where you want it, right underneath the spring, push in, and it, put, and it pushes the valve up. And just tap the valve down, and you can get the keepers. It's as simple as that. How slick is that? And I still have the original box and literature. Instruction manual with this one. It's a WW Junior for Fords and other light cars. So this is uh, 1921 to 1923. That is obviously the Model T era. Model Ts are flatheads, just like uh, Farmall Cubs. The engines are slightly larger than the Farmall Cub, but this is, you know, it's more or less a light duty. Um, valve spring compressor manufactured by Wainwright and Wainwright in Brooklyn, New York. And you know what? I bet it works just as well today as it did a hundred years ago. All right. So let's take a quick look at these valves that I removed. These are pretty cruddy. You can tell how there's not a uniform ring around the whole thing. So this one was not seating all the way. This one is actually in much better condition and actually has a, a better wear pattern to it. This one might have been sealing. All right, it's even more evident on the uh, valve seats in the top of the block here. Look at this one. I don't see any shiny surfaces on that whole ring. It's all covered with carbon and oil and sludge. And this one, you can actually see a shiny surface on there. So these definitely match up with the valves that we pulled out. So again, these are pretty old. I think we need to go ahead and replace all the valves. I also want to hone the cylinders, get some of this glaze off. And as long as we're in here, we're going to put new piston rings in them also. So I'm going to do some research on the size rings that I need, what valves I need. And I guess I also need to research the insert bearings for the rods so we can get those replaced too. So the Cub's going to be down for a while, unfortunately, but uh, I'm just going to take my time with this and do it right. Order parts a little bit at a time as I can afford them and uh, we'll make a couple videos in the process. So thanks for watching. We'll be back with the next video as soon as I get some parts.